Hello and welcome to SFDC Sessions. My name is Elisa Carroll and I'm Editor-in-Chief of Henry Magazine. You can find us online at henrymag.com. Today we are thrilled to mark International Women's Day and design of course has an amazing history of empowered pioneering creative women from Annie Albers to Andre Putman to Melanie Barnett. And today we are excited to welcome Colette Cosentino a California painter who has always followed her own path and who this week celebrates three years of her Santa Barbara Atelier and the launch of her new wall coverings collection with Schumacher. Please join me in welcoming Colette Cosentino. So Colette, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. And I was really curious just to dive in and ask you if you wouldn't mind sharing the story of your fine art background. And I see you're, you're sitting in front of some of your beautiful work. Honestly, it goes back to when I was a toddler and I had this mom who was really quite cool. Um, I kept, I could not help myself with the crayons. I've always had these crayons out and at about level three, three and a half feet on the walls all around our kitchen. I would scribble wonderful designs and patterns. And she recalls me at a very early age drawing out birds. And at first I'd get scolded and she'd be like, Colette, this is the kitchen wall. Here's some paper, do it here. And I'd be like, no, I want to go big. <laughs> and what, uh, she eventually gave up and just let me. And I love that because it ended up being a real foretelling of what I would do for a living and the fact that I would paint and draw large scale the most comfortably. Eventually, I, I swam my way out of that and ended up in art school and studied graphic design and illustration and, and had got a degree in visual communications. And that was in the early 90s. So everything we did was by hand. Nothing was on the computer yet. And it was just switching over. Things were, design was starting to go over to the computer. And so it's just really cool to find myself here now. I'm so grateful to be able to have my own art studio. It's at a retail location. And I get to just paint and make things, make beautiful things for people. And it's a, it's a truly, a joy. Well, it's a heroic path. I always feel anyone who follows their true creativity and um, manages to make a life of it. So that has to do with your perseverance and your passion and, and um, it's extraordinary. And so turning to your collaboration with Schumacher, there's a great story behind that. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us how you started working with Dara and with Schumacher. Sure. It started when I noticed my friend on Instagram had, was part of this um, uh, Lotus Land Gala. Uh, Lotus Land is this incredible garden we have here in Montecito. It's I think one of the top in the, in the world. And they were having a fundraiser event and I wanted to be involved. And so I reached out to my friend who I knew was putting on the party and just asked how I could assist. And she said, well, as a matter of fact, we have this um, unsightly um, chain link fence that we need to cover because they were redoing their Japanese garden. So I, before you know it, I'm somehow on board and I am creating this, at the time was supposed to be a 300 foot mural on loose canvas. Um, and the minute I got the gig, I'm like, oh great, now where am I gonna paint this thing? Because in the end it was ended up being, you know, the length of a football field or um, you know, city blocks long. And fortunately, my my buddy, my buddy's landlord um, had just purchased the old bus depot in Ventura. And so he opened that up for me. And so I was able to paint this enormous mural, just this yards and yards and yards and yards of canvas um, in this space. It was a really magical experience. I really, for the first time in my life, got to be completely just, uh, it was all, it was so spontaneous and I was so excited to be doing the work. There's something just really extra magical that happened. So eventually I had 28 days to paint it, did it, we got the thing installed on this enormous fence 
And uh, they kept it up for a while. And that is when creative director Dara and um, her friend Madeline Stewart came yeah. and uh, just were coming to visit Lotus Land. I don't know that they knew anything about the mural. It just happened to be up at the time. And so I caught Dara's eye and she was like, wow, this is really something. And I could see this translating into wallpaper. It's very unique. So then I, I got an email, phone call, and then that's when the process started. So that was 2017. And then, you so know. It was four years uh, in the making. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now it finally just launched. And so it's all very exciting. So may I ask you, um, so you obviously, again, we said you have a fine art practice. That's your main um that's your main platform. Did you adapt paintings to wall coverings for the collection? Did you create designs from scratch? How did that process work? When I, I knew that I was going to be creating for Schumann. So I like to work out all the wiggles, you know, or, or the stress of that <laughs> or this task um by kind of just being getting free about it and just doing my own thing just to see how it goes and just to feel the feels and see what comes out and i'm so glad that i i did because two of two so i painted pretty large scale they were like um nine or ten feet tall by you know 11 feet wide one was quite one was smaller and i actually think it's brindill uh that was like eight feet tall by maybe 10 and a half feet wide. And I just had so much fun with them. And then when I did have a meeting with uh, Dara and Pam, uh, they came to take a look and they immediately just took those two. So that was really great. And I was just like, I'm so, <laughs> so So that glad. was deal and is it Siren? No, um, Bijou. Bijou, okay. Yeah, so those two were already created. And then I went ahead and created the Sirene um, and uh, I'm trying to blink on the- The Chateau, you know? Yes, okay. Yeah. So, that, so that's the, lo the Lotuses. And um, so yes, so those I created for them. And both were a delight. It was really wonderful to create in here. Well, do you mind if we talk about the inspiration for one of the designs which captured my heart, um, Brindille, which is so evocative of, you know, a forest out of a fable or a Renaissance tapestry. I wondered if you wouldn't mind sharing what inspired that piece. Well, Renaissance tapestry. Okay, so I have always been captivated by medieval art, um, Renaissance, uh, even in Byzantine. I, I just love anything ancient and old. And so I often visit there in books. And um, when I go to a museum, I'm, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, and then the old, the old master's paintings, they have all these people in the foreground, right? Doing their thing. But then I'm looking in the back left corner or the back right corner, that you will always see some kind of interesting landscape. Yeah. And um, usually the trees are kind of strange and wonderful. And then there's, there does tend to be mountains and this and that. Well, if I may read something, I love um, the, the poetry that you even bring to your prose when describing your work. Um, and when you were talking about one of your, one of your paintings, you write, um, my signature chinoiserie style depicts a serene stream and foliage at twilight. A crescent moon hangs in the sky surrounded by stars framed by transparent clouds that keep the, cool, the air cool and fresh. And then of course you achieve that through all of your beautiful palettes that you use of warm grays and beiges. Um, how did you decide on the colorways for the paintings? Because obviously typically you paint a painting and it's in a certain um, hue, right? How did you choose the different colorways for Brindille, for example? We knew we would want to go, we, we knew we were going to want a light version, obviously, and we knew we would want a real deep version. And then we wanted to get a little extra like, like Parisian or romantic, you know? And so um, 
I don't know who chose the peacock color, but it's brilliant. So gorgeous. And it's, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know who did that, but thank you. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it was me or not. I, I really couldn't tell you, but uh, it was a great, great choice. We kind of stuck with the mostly neutrals on the other um, designs. Um, in Bizu, we do have a, like a, a blue gray one that's awfully pretty, uh, but mostly neutrals. And I guess that's because it fits in most people's homes in that regard. Um, well, I'm so glad we went, we went with the, the peacock and the, and the dark black, because I think entryways and dining rooms and powder rooms are gonna be gorgeous in that. Yes, and you know, that team at Schumacher knows what they're doing because obviously, teal and peacock is such a color that's being embraced at the moment. So that'll be a wonderful resource, I think, for the designers watching. And speaking of that, um, may I ask you, for the designers who are watching who might want to one day develop a wall coverings collection, um, is there any insight that you came out with that you would offer? Something that they should anticipate, whether it's the commitment of time or creativity mm -hmm. or? Definitely, there is a commitment of time. Uh, the thing about creative people, designers, is you find those, um, the imagery that you're so drawn to and you want to make something out of it. I would really, my advice is just make it, go for it, you know, and just have fun and explore and don't limit yourself. And because uh, that's that's our limitations are only found within. There are none. So get rid of those and just have so much fun being you and creating the you know just being adventurous with your creations because it's likely that it's going to be incredible and well received. That's beautiful. I love that. Um, I love that advice. Just be true to your voice. Right. Go with the strength of your voice. Um, and yeah. sky it, right? Be as expressive as you'd like and worry about refining it for, you know, it'll get refined for production later as you go, but yes. yeah. Indeed. What yeah. we're also looking for is like a really unique point of view. Yes, yeah. that's it. Because yeah. there's a lot out there and a lot of the same out there. So you just, you do you. Yeah. <laughs> that is the best advice. Um, well, Colette, thank you so very much for taking the time to be with us today. It's a, been a joy talking to you. Um, thank you for your beautiful work. Um, you can see it online at henrymag.com. You can go to the Schumacher, fschumacher.com website. Of course, go to the showroom at the Design Center. Um, yeah, thank you. And we hope to see more soon. Thank you so much. It was, it's an honor to be here and talking with you. And yes, it's all very exciting. Thank you very much.